Hi guys, uh, I sent you some block diagram programs or problems. Here's a real simplified sort of a block and what you're trying to do with these blocks is figure out, well, if it looks like this on the surface, what does it look like underneath the surface? So here'd be you now just a real simple block where there's no real deformation in the crust. It's just nice horizontal beds. Now obviously if you get cut into a cliff, you know, you're going to see those at different angles. You notice how when I cut it at an angle there, how the beds look wider than if they're just not cut. So it's important as you go forward to understand that beds are going to look different depending on their situation underneath the ground when they appear at the surface. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a plunging anticline and a plunging syncline because those are ones that are a little bit more complex. You guys know what anticlines and synclines are already. You know that an anticline looks like that, right? And a syncline, of course, is just the um, opposite of that. So in the case of uh, an anticline, uh, as I go down, the oldest stuff is in the middle. Uh, in a syncline, uh, the youngest stuff is in the middle. So there'd be an anticline and a syncline. So if I'm going to make those things, we've got the rolling pin here. You would be doing this in class if you were in class. It's just a good activity. Um, clay is like really stiff, even though it's supposed to be modeling clay. You have to get it good and flattened out. Probably should have washed this off first, but here we go. We're trying to get it flattened out using the rolling pin. See, I'm having to put a fair amount of pressure on it, but okay, I can probably get a little bit flatter than that, even there okay so we'll call this the um maybe we'll call this the young layer i don't know but there's one layer of sediment and now we'll do um the blue so get the blue and get it smashed out too and you can see it's pretty stiff stuff this one's got a tiny bit of red mixed in with it but that's okay so we're going to get the blue flattened out, hopefully get it off of the cutting board here. See, it's really kind of hard, sticky stuff. That one didn't come off worth a crud, but we can throw it back on there. And we'll take and Just flatten her out like that. So there's the blue layer. Got a little bit of leftover on here, but I can clean that up no problem later. Got a little bit left on my rolling pin. I'm going to have to move my rolling pin over for the next one. So I'll put that on there too. Now we'll do the red. I'll just jump over here and use a little different part of the of the wood. This is where I need the good marble rolling pin, but I'd get in trouble if I used that one. So, okay. So there I'm getting my red nice and rolled out. So there's the red layer. So I'll pick that off of there. That one turned out pretty good. Nice red layer of rock there, so I'm up to the three layer sandwich there. And the last layer I'm going to throw on here is a brown layer. Roll out a brown one now. It's like kind of like foods class a little bit. This is how hard stuff to move though, it ain't like flour. Getting it good and flat. Okay. 
that's getting pretty good right there. So, okay, I'm gonna get it off the board here though. Oh, it's just really sticky. Their blue is terribly sticky. So, okay, so there's all my layers right there. So there's my, my layers of sediment. We're gonna flip the board over here though. So it's on a little bit better side. We're gonna smoosh them together. A little bit more heat and pressure. Get them good and flattened out here. So they're all molded together like the real world. Okay. So now I'm gonna take and um, trim them up a little bit. We'll trim this one, trim off the fat. And you can see I've already got some kind of really cool layers even in those little blocks there. And we'll trim off the fat here too. So once again, you can see my layers. Brown layer is nice and thick on that one. And then right there. So I've got one really nice block here. Like I said, you guys are doing block diagrams. If uh, I cut this in half, so now I got two block diagrams. I'm going to make this one right here. I'm going to make it an anticline. So in an anticline structure, um, the oldest bed, which is the bottom bed, is in the middle. So in this case, the red layer is the oldest, the brown layer is the youngest. Now, a lot of times anticlines are not nice and perfectly asymmetric uh, um, like that. A lot of times they're kind of asymmetric, sort of like this, right? And a lot of times they dip one direction or another. They might dip to the north, south, northeast, southwest. So they tend to be what we call plunging. They plunge. So to create a plunging anticline, we could take and carve this at an angle so it's plunging in that direction. So there's what a plunging anticline is going to look like at the surface of the earth. Okay, so if you'd fly over places in Wyoming, even parts of Montana, you're going to see these kinds of structures looking at you as you fly over the earth. This is a plunging anticline, which means the A part, the oldest, is in the middle. Okay, just like when we talk about anticlines in general, um, this is the oldest rock, and that forms in the middle of the A. Now a syncline is going to be just opposite. So if I take a syncline like this, now I'm taking these rocks and making it a syncline, right? So in the syncline structure, in the A part, the oldest structure is actually the youngest rock. And just like anticlines dipping, synclines a lot of times are going to dip too. So if I take that and I plunge that syncline by cutting it at a diagonal like so, there's going to be a plunging syncline. So you can see the difference between the two right there. And a lot of times you're going to see them in concert with each other. So what you have here is a plunging anticline right here and a plunging syncline right here. And the reason you get that type of deal is because anticlines and synclines don't act in uh, solo, they tend to be in pairs. So you've got an anticline, syncline there. And if you're walking along the surface of the ground um, and you're flying over a place and you're, you're looking down in the plain like Pennsylvania or parts of Montana, Wyoming, and you see this kind of deal going on with the rocks. Um, so now you're in your plane and you're doing a flyover, right? Here is a plunging anticline, this is a plunging syncline, right? The A in this case, the younger rock is in the middle, and, in the, in the, and this is on the syncline. And on the anticline, the older rock's in the middle. And um, we'll probably show you some of this stuff in like a video. I think Michael Collier's got one. But it's kind of fun to do this in the lab. Like I said, um, a lot of times in nature, they go hand in hand. So you've got an anticline, and you've got a syn syncline. And you can, you can even make those with this deal right here by compressional forces, 
right? So those are compressional forces that create those things. So clay's kind of fun. It's too bad you couldn't be in school because that's what I bought all this clay for. I actually have big stacks of this clay at the school so you can do this kind of stuff. And then it helps kind of make sense of what's going on in the earth a little better too. So um, the block diagrams you're doing for today or tomorrow are just nice and simple ones. Um, you're going to number the beds, I think, I'm not sure, but in an anticline, um, this would be the oldest, one, two, three, four is the youngest. The, the oldest is always the lowest number. So in this case, this is one, two, three, and four. Okay. So there's a little bit of plunging anticline, syncline information for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>